If you've been on this channel for a while, you'll know I reviewed this keyboard from Kogan. Despite what I had said about it in the video, I ended up discovering that the keyboard is hot garbage, and I'm very sorry for telling people it was worth a buy. There is a certain ring when you hit the spacebar hard. After a while, keys start inputting twice, sometimes three times, despite me only having hit it once. I felt a bit cheated, but I guess you get what you pay for. After experiencing the bulk of the pain of money leaving my wallet in exchange for a garbage product, I had to look elsewhere. I searched for months and months until I found this board, the Durgord Taurus K320 Mechanical Keyboard. It retails for $150 Aussie dollars on Banggood with free shipping, but I found mine used on eBay with cherry brown switches for just $85. You can also get it with a variety of other cherry switches, and the board itself comes in two colours, this grey colour, which is what I have, or this retro white colour. So how is it? Well I'll let you know right after this. I can't really comment on the unboxing experience, because I got the keyboard used. Here's what you'll get in the box though. Seeing as that's all I know about what's in the box, let's move on. The build quality on this thing is spectacular. The aforementioned Kogan keyboard has absolutely nothing on this board with its sad old plastic build. The entire board is a rock solid build that feels heavy and sturdy when I type on it, even when I'm really bashing the keys up. Speaking of the keys, the keycaps feel incredible. They are PBT keycaps, which means it's a high quality plastic being used to create the keycaps, and there's a mildly grippy feel on the actual keycap surface itself. The keycaps also don't have any imperfections on them, beyond a few cosmetic scuffs that are likely a result of me buying mine on the used market. Though it's less standout look, might not be for everyone, compared to the RGB mania that plagues the world of PC peripherals, the basic design suits me perfectly. The typeface on the keycaps doesn't look like it's trying to appeal to 12 year olds, and instead focuses on looking like the alphabet, which sounds like a silly thing to say, but coming from this atrocity, it's more than welcome from me. The lack of branding beyond this Durgod logo below the arrow keys is also very welcome. My only gripe is that I wish there was no text on the tab, shift, and enter keys, and that they were just symbols. This would contribute further to its already minimalist presentation. Just like how this eerily similar looking ducky keyboard handles it. Certain models of this keyboard seem to have white LEDs to light up the keys, but keep in mind I can't speak on their effectiveness as my model does not have these LEDs. On the bottom of the board, there are three different ways you can route your cables. You can do so through the middle, or on the left and the right of the board, depending on your setup of course. Speaking of the cable though, it is unfortunate that the cable is not braided, especially given the price of the board. This is not a big deal at all, as the cable can be removed and replaced very easily. The function keys, to compensate for the unfortunate lack of dedicated media keys and volume controls on the board, have these buttons mapped from the F1 to F7 keys. F1 to F4 do media playback, and F5 to F7 do volume. There is also the letters MR on F12, which let you switch your custom profiles on the software, which we will look through now. The software, in terms of actual user experience, is pretty awful. However, don't let that fool you into thinking that it's not functional. Here are a few things you can do. You can remap any key to any other key, turn any key into a macro that presses a combination of buttons, make any key a media key or volume key, make any key a mouse button or scroll button, tell any key to launch a program, disable any key altogether, and this can all be done with multiple profiles, which can be switched between on the fly with the aforementioned F12 key, as these profiles are saved directly on the board. Now it's time for a typing test. So 
So should you buy this board for 150 Aussie dollars or 100 US dollars? Absolutely. The construction is premium. The typing experience is phenomenal. The software is versatile. And as one of the few good keyboards that doesn't scream I'm a gamer, you will certainly not be disappointed by aesthetics if that's the look you're going for. If you're in the market for something like this and you have the money to throw at it, this is certainly the board to go for. All right, got the Kogan board here. Just gonna put it right where it belongs.